Good evening. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to talk mm. a little bit about lung cancer basics today and, and kind of inform what we know uh, about the field and a little bit of what we still have yet to learn. Um, the impact of lung cancer is, is very important, although we don't discuss it very often. In fact, lung cancer is a major health problem in this country. It's the leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and it's the second most common cancer in the United States. In 2010, uh, we expect to have approximately 200,000 new cases of lung cancer diagnosed and 150,000 cancer deaths. There are a number of lung cancer risk factors. Smoking is the one that almost everybody recognizes and knows, but there are also several other risk factors that are important to be aware of. One is that you can have passive smoking, i.e. secondhand smoke that we talk about, waitresses, people that are airline um, stewardesses, people who work in places where there's a lot of smoking. The um, occupational exposure follows along with that, and what is the exposure of the workplace? History of lung cancer in the family, usually first, uh, first relatives, uh, as well as family history of uh, lung cancer, and age over 65. As you get older, your incidence of lung cancer risk will increase over time. As I said, though, smoking is not the whole story. Um, the majority of smokers who develop lung cancer actually quit about 10 years before their diagnosis was made. So it's not a direct uh, relationship right at the time that you're smoking necessarily. More non-smokers die of lung cancer, in fact, every year than all of patients who die from leukemia or pancreas or ovarian cancers. So it's a significant number of patients who are no longer smokers, and you need to recognize that as a risk factor if you smoked in the past. The other interesting fact is that one in five women uh, diagnosed with lung cancer actually has never smoked. And if you look at men and women, about 15,000 deaths a year are in lifelong non-smokers, either be related to occupational exposures, such as radon, um, or, it, or smoking secondhand smoke, and there are some that we don't know the risk factors. If you look at the number of patients and the impact of lung cancer on patients who are no longer smokers or never smoked, it's roughly equivalent to the same amount of impact in patients that die as breast cancer for women. So it is an important disease to be aware of and recognize that you could have lung cancer or get lung cancer and that we just need to recognize it early. Symptoms, particularly with early lung cancer, in general, aren't very often. They're asymptomatic, and we don't have symptoms to find. And that has made this disease hard to detect, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the presentation. But there are some, some symptoms that you can develop. Cough in about half to two thir uh, three quarters of patients. Homoptysis, which is coughing up of blood. Weight loss. Shortness of breath chest pain or bone pain. Many of these symptoms are later, later symptoms from the cancer, but they're also very nonspecific. So just if you have a cough doesn't mean you have lung cancer. And all of these symptoms are common for a variety of other diseases. So it's not absolute, but it's important that you not ignore those symptoms. The basics of diagnosis and treatment of a patient who has a lung nodule is really first to determine what is it. Is it just benign and it's not a cancer, or is it malignant and it needs to be treated? That can be determined by biopsy in most cases. The other important issue is where is it? Has it gone to anywhere outside of just that lesion in the lung? And if so, we need to look at staging studies, and your doctors will often order a number of different studies in order to look for if it has gone anywhere else. And then in terms of treatment, it determines on where it is but also how much of the lung we can remove and have the patient still have good lung function. And that is kind of the basics of how we make that diagnosis. Treatment options are really divided into surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy or combinations thereof. And what we choose really has to do with the lung cancer location as well as the size of it, and it determines how we mix those different treatments for you. In general, we talk about uh, lung cancer being four different stages. 
Stage 1 is very localized disease. And surgery for small local cancers have the very best outcomes. And in fact, for very early lung cancers, the survival can be 80 to 90 percent. Overall five-year survivals for all patients with stage 1 lung cancer would be about 60 to 70 percent because there's quite a variety in the size of the tumors that can be called stage 1. Stage 1, as you can see um, here, is a single tumor, but it has not gone outside of that small tumor, and it's localized with no involvement of the lymph nodes. Stage 2 is the next stage, and one of the best predictors of survival is actually whether the tumor has reached the lymph nodes. So stage 2 is a localized tumor with tumor only in the very nearest lymph nodes, right still within that portion of the lung. In those cases, we will actually talk about surgery, commonly a lobectomy, which would be a part of the lung that the tumor is in. Sometimes we'll take a little less or a little more, depending on the tumor. And then we will determine if chemotherapy or radiation therapy can be added to that as a way to improve survival and keep it from coming back. The five-year survival in general for patients who have stage 2 tumors is a little bit lower at about 40 to 55 percent. Stage 3 cancer reflects the fact that most patients diagnosed after lung cancer has spread outside of the lung. And so here we can see that there is a tumor, and the tumor has gotten to the next level of lymph nodes, so it's in the mediastinal nodes. And then chemotherapy and radiation therapy is usually the, at least the first stage, if not the main treatment for uh, those types of cancers. And in certain patients where we have a good response and we think that it can be localized all within the same surgery, then surgery after chemoradiation can increase survival and increase the chance of cure in that patient population. Stage 4 disease is where survival, uh, survival is decreased if the lung cancer has spread further outside of the chest cavity and usually involves distant sites like brain, bone, liver, adrenal, or elsewhere within one or both lungs. Usually we think about chemotherapy, Sometimes we'll add radiation or perhaps surgery on treating symptoms, and as I said, that survival is decreased in this stage. One of the questions that's been very interesting is lung cancer different between men and women? And in fact, lung cancer is different in women. There are different susceptibilities. As I mentioned, one in five women with lung cancer is a lifelong non-smoker. Different biologies. There are specific types of lung cancer predominant in women, which I'll talk about. Different responses to treatment, as certain tumor-specific gene mutations are more common in women. And different prognosis, as stage for stage, women have better survival than men. If we look at risks and susceptibilities, in general, women with lung cancer have a lower risk of smoking or a lower smoking history. About 40 percent less cigarettes smoked over their lifetime until diagnosis, more low-tar brands and women are three times more likely to be never or non-smokers than men. Roughly 20 percent of women have never smoked. There's an increase in terms of the impact of work environment exposure, with 23 percent of patients having some history of radon or other environmental exposure, and secondhand exposure is more common in women, with in fact there's about a 24 percent greater risk of a woman getting lung cancer if, she has a, uh, if she's a non-smoker and lives with a smoker. So it does impact. There are biological differences with a decrease in nicotine metabolism and carcinogen clearance in women. There are increased binding of carcinogens to DNA and an increased incidence of gene mutations, all of which are thought to contribute to perhaps an increased susceptibility in lung cancer. In terms of lung cancer subtypes, there's an increased incidence of adenocarcinoma. There's about a two to four times increase in a subtype called bronchoalveolar. And if you look at non-smokers, the majority of them, 50 to 93 percent, depending on which country that you look at, of women who have lung, have lung cancer have adenocarcinoma. And that's why women tend to have a higher increased incidence of adenocarcinoma. And here in this graph, you can see if you look at males and females for the four major subtypes of lung cancer, you can see that women have an increased incidence in adenocarcinoma and men have an increased incidence in squamous cell. 
Response to treatment is very different gender-based as well. Women have better responses to standard chemotherapy, a higher incidence of these therapeutic target gene mutations, and a more benefit relative to the duration of smoking cessation. If we look at these targeted therapies, the one that's been most interest is that the epidermal growth factor receptors, or EGFR mutations, are much more common in women. And this is critically important because there's actually now drugs that work better in patients that have those mutations. So that erlotinib is a type of inhibitor. There's a 70% response uh, if you have the mutation, but only a 10 to 20% if you do not. And this is important because we're looking at different drugs to target these and treat patients, which we couldn't before. There's now a variety of mutations which are currently being investigated, and I've listed them here. In terms of survival, there's also gender-based difference. Although women are diagnosed more often with advanced cancer, either due to differences in their disease, a denial, especially if they were a non-smoker, or a misdiagnosis or a late referral, women have better overall survival than men at all tumor types and all stages. So clearly there's a lot we have to learn about lung cancer and in men and in women. What we do know is that lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in both men and women. We know that smoking is the greatest modifiable risk factor, but non-smokers can get lung cancer, and you need to think about those risk factors. As I said, women with no that are non-smokers do have an increased incidence, and the majority of patients diagnosed with lung cancer quit 10 years ago, so you still need to be aware of that. Gender differences impact disease and outcome such that women may have an increased susceptibility. There's different types of lung cancer. Specific mutations are important in their treatment and improved overall survival. But what is really important is that survival is greatest when lung cancer is found early. And although in the past we really have not had a way to screen for lung cancer or a way to necessarily reliably find it earlier, new data is arguing that there is hope on the horizon and there is a chance to start changing what we know about lung cancer in a very important way.